and welcome to My Tiny Bottles, the project where I'm exploring my grandmother's legacy of miniature liquor bottles one tiny bottle at a time. I'm your host, Tammy Coxon, and my guest today is Camper English. Some of you may be aware of Camper from his amazing academics blog. How long have you been doing that? Uh, since about 2008. That's pretty impressive in the blogosphere. Uh, Camper is also well known as an author, and so two of his recent books have caught my attention in particular. One is Doctors and Distillers, which uh, we just featured on a Tammy's Tastings cocktail class, I guess last year, right after it came out, uh, where we mixed up cocktails and learned about the amazing history of booze and medicine. And how they intersect throughout time. And then your latest book is The Ice Book, and this was featured on the cover of the New York Times, which is definitely a cocktail book writer's dream. So tell us a little about The Ice Book. Sure. Um, the Ice Book is really mostly about making clear ice and then what to do with it, how to cut it up into different shapes, freeze stuff of it inside of it, and then bling it out with patterns and different tricks. Yeah, Camper's the guy who basically came up with that way of making a uh, clear ice at home. So if you've tried that, if you've experimented with it or had a clear ice cube someplace, this is the guy. <laughs> well, I brought you here not to talk about ice, but to taste a tiny bottle. Uh, it is a tiny bottle of clear liquid, so I guess that kind of counts. <laughs> uh, so this is Morandini Maraschino. So I wrote about this in the blog post, and it's the last video that I did a couple of videos ago, actually, um, where you can learn about kind of the history of Maraschino. Um, but uh, what do you know? What's, what's your associations with Maraschino? Uh, well, I became familiar with it in a craft cocktail renaissance mm -hmm. that we're still in right now. Thanks, last word. <laughs> yeah, but uh, because suddenly everybody needed it, yep. <laughs> thanks to the last word for the most part. But uh, I reviewed the Oxford Companion to Spirits and Cocktails today to freshen up on my history. Yes. And uh, learned that the category of maraschino liqueur was created at the end of the 1700s. It became more popular in the early 1800s. And I know you've done a lot of historical research on the category as well. Well, a little bit, yeah. But of course, my research starts much later because my grandmother only collected from the 1970s to the mid-2000s. So my research is always trying to pinpoint when is this particular bottle. And the best bet I have on this one is the 1980s. So, I mean, so Maraschino, it's a cherry liqueur um, of sort, of a sort, right? It's not what you think of. It's not going to taste like cherries. What, so what should we expect? What kind of flavor profiles? And we, so one, there's the, what would we expect if this was just a regular Maraschino? And then do you have thoughts about how it might have changed in its years in the bottle? Probably 19, yeah, 1980s for this one. Well, um, it could be as uh, you experienced with another liqueur, the, some of the aromatics uh -huh. might have kind of leaked away as they did with your uh, minty liqueur that yes, you tasted the, before. The so that might be something I'm wondering. Uh, Maraschino in general, I, I think of it as a very floral uh, liqueur with a wonderful aroma and really powerful taste. It can really take over a cocktail. Yeah, so the modern one, as I talked about on the previous episode, is Luxardo. And Luxardo, I always like say to people, it has this funky flavor right? And it's very distinctive. It's one of the ingredients, like I can't necessarily taste a cocktail and know what's in it very well, but Maraschino, I'll have a much higher chance of getting something right. But then I've had other brands that don't necessarily have that. So I don't know what to expect here. All right, this is a fascinating little bottle. Um, so I think it, I actually have to like pull this pull tab. Oh yeah. All right. Have you ever seen a bottle with like this? I have never seen that, that top before. No. All right. Let's hope we're doing it right. It looked like it did a good job at uh, keeping the bottle full though. It did, yeah. This one actually has a great, uh, I don't know, maybe, huh. What do you think? I got this far. Should I keep going? Yeah. It would be really sad yeah. if we pull over. And then. And oh. then you just think it's going to go up. Yep. All right, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. Have a satisfying little pop. Okay, yeah, it is like a little plastic cork. That's fascinating. <laughs> All right. Let's find out. It's very syrupy. I mean, Maraschino is sweet, but that's very syrupy. This yeah. one is, um, I'm trying to remember, 33% uh, alcohol by volume, so it's pretty standard. All right, here we go. Mm, it's got that nutty kind of cherry, that sort of almond, almond extract kind of cherry idea going on. Because the cherry pits contain the uh, amygdalin, I believe it is, right. that it's the, the same stuff. 
It's in amaretto. Right. And this, Bitter almonds, yeah. Yep. You would. Very, very nutty nose. I get, I'm getting really like cherry almond. It, it totally smells like an amaretto. Doesn't have the color. All right. It smells juicy. It does? Yeah. To me. Yeah. I agree. It's very fresh smelling. Doesn't smell dusty at all. Tastes Whoa. a little dusty. Uh, almost uh, something floral tasting almost mm -hmm. uh i don't want to say violets but something yeah. like that like that i could oh. see that and as the finish dries out it's very it's like roses it's yes like... yeah floral for sure it goes back to what you're saying and it's really interesting it um changes dramatically from first sip to finish like my first sip it i was like oh that's it's got that dusty thing and then there was something kind of like a little off about it and oh. then and then it kind of gets fruity in the middle. It's definitely. And then surprisingly yeah. drying and the very mm -hmm. finish, like almost if it's uh, tannic or something, mm -hmm. which I wonder if that might come from the, the stemmy parts that are in it. Yeah, so tell me about stemmy parts. <laughs> I had always assumed that we, when you would make maraschino, so my assumption had always been you start with, um, a cherry eau de vie, and they sweeten it, right? That that was my assumption, but you tell me that is not the case. And so that that brings me, what, before you tell that story, so uh, let's pull out our comparison bottle because I think the story you're gonna tell me has to do with our comparison bottle, right? Sure does. Okay, so this is the modern one that everybody knows about, Luxardo, um, and uh, this one is the one that you've sort of seen how they make it. I have, I've been to the Luxardo distillery in Italy and learned how they make it. And it's yeah, absolutely not intuitive. <laughs> um, uh, so the process is they squeeze the cherries, but they set aside the juice for other purposes, such as uh, in the maraschino cherries, the actual cherries for uh, garnish. And the pits and the stems and the seeds of the tree, they go, all those solids are infused into neutral spirit uh, for a long period of time, and then it's redistilled, kind of like how a gin right. is juniper that's with neutral spirit that's redistilled. And then I think it's rested a while and then sweetened um, okay. to make it a liqueur. And um, so that's why it's, it's not, it doesn't taste like cherries. Right, I've always said it tastes like cherry pit. And so now I find it's cherry pit and stem and leaf. Well, let's see. So that is the one we have. This is the Luxardo. This is an older bottle, you said. You've had this one around for a little while. Yes. Uh, it's a previous importer um, that was the, that company was sold to another portfolio. And uh, I, I'm guessing from the date stamp, it's 2009, but I could be completely wrong there. So it smells totally different. Yeah. Smells. This one doesn't smell almondy. It doesn't smell nutty at all. The modern Luxardo doesn't smell nutty. You could, you would, might guess there were stems in this. Sure. I would say. Yeah, and texture-wise, much lighter in texture. Yeah, a lot right. Less sugar, so for sure. yeah, I mean, this just has legs for days. Um, so they're similar in alcohol content. I think thirty-two percent, thirty-three percent, but I think more sugar. No, oh, very bright, very like um, it, it, it kind of leaps <laughs> and onto the palate. And uh, I am getting some like cherry, but it's like that red cherry, the juicy cherry yeah. um, that I, I think I don't usually taste when I taste Luxardo, but <laughs> after the other one. After the other one, you're like, wow, this tastes downright fruity, which I'm not used to from a maraschino. But um, very aromatic. Do you still have some for your comparison purposes? Mm -hmm. Have some more. Just, uh, it's interesting. It's a um, similar but different set of flavor notes. It's, it's. This one's not good. <laughs> the Morandini, it's not good. And I don't know if it was good in its time. It's just not good now. But this really has this kind of chemical -y taste. It does. Yeah. It doesn't compare well to Luxardo. That no, is for definitely sure. not. <laughs> and there is no um, no Morandini for us to uh, to try. Yeah, can you? T uh, did you talk about um, when you researched it? Yeah, I did some research, and I, you know, it, the company existed for a 
few years, a bunch of years, the Morandini, they made uh, brandy and grappa, I think. And they also made a whole bunch of interesting um, uh, Amari. Um, so when I find examples of this tiny bottle online, I also will find examples of all these very exciting looking Amari. I'm like, why doesn't grandma have those um, instead of uh, Maraschino? But um, yeah, this was um, definitely not my favorite of what I've tasted so far. I wonder how it would be mixed into a uh, cocktail dough. Hmm. All right. Well, that was certainly interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, if not good, interesting, <laughs> and that's, that's interesting, really all we want interesting is good on its interesting. own. Interesting. <laughs> well, speaking of things that are probably not good, but are interesting, I have a bonus bottle for you. Oh, goody. So when we were talking about what you wanted to taste, I was saying, you know, I'm Here's the list you can choose from any of these things. There are a few things I'm saving, hoping to you know, talk to particular people about them. But I don't think there's anyone out there who is dying to taste Seagram's Cherry Cola Schnapps. And you said, I'd taste that. And I was like, excellent. Like, that sounds disgusting. Let's put right. it in our mouth. Well, it's also, we've got, we got a little theme going on here because we have cherries and we're going to have more oh. cherries. So, yeah, there we go. Someone's thinking. Yeah, it's not okay. me. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're just you're just here for the good looks. Right, <laughs> I've got a function. You're just the talent. You don't have to do the, uh, <laughs> the planning. All right, so Seagram's cherry cola schnapps. This one was an interesting one to research. I feel like I should win some kind of prize because when I put in the search terms Seagram's and then cherry cola schnapps, all in you know in quotations, uh, this oh, there was one hit, just one hit, uh, and it claims that this is from 1986. Um, at least it appears in some Seagram company documents from 1986. And that does, as far as I can tell, seem to be kind of peak schnapps, period. Mm. Um, it's a lot of um, random schnapps I've been finding from the 80s. Oh, I yeah. I grew up in that era. I was going to say, how old are you? Like, when did you start drinking? Uh, Let's ask that question rather than how old you are. When did you start drinking? I started drinking in high school, so let the the later eighties. Late eighties, okay. Uh, when you know when I shouldn't have been, and definitely sure. there was some schnapps. There was a lot of cinnamon schnapps. Um, but I think a, another important thing of the era is cherry coke must have been introduced around must the have. same time, right? Because I remember the commercials, new ch -ch -ch cherry coke. <laughs> You know, it's almost like, like of course, these bear very little resemblance to traditional schnapps from Europe. So it's like this name just got taken get kind of as a substitute for liqueur. Like, you know, you knew you liked schnapps and then, oh, look, there's a new flavor of schnapps, right? I think we could probably come up with examples of that today, too. Yeah, well, now we have flavored whiskeys. Yeah. Um, that are like that. The flavored vodka craze that came later was very similar, although less syrupy. It's very authentically cola colored. That's for sure. Uh, this one was a glass bottle, uh, and it's kept its height very well. It was a little low. It's kind of down to there. But I think that's maybe where it was supposed to be. So that's always good news. All right. <laughs> Doesn't smell a lot like cherries. Smells a little like cola. Yeah, I can smell like cola. cola. Or like too much caramel coloring. Yeah, it smells like <laughs> caramel coloring, which, you know, is a big flavoring aspect in cola. So that makes sense. Doesn't have like a, a, the almond cherry smell. Nope. Now there's a little like like baked uh, baking spices notes, like, a, like cinnamon mm -hmm. and... A little bit. That makes up the cola flavor. Yeah, it's it's uh, opening up a little bit. I'm going to swirl it. Look at me swirling my uh, cherry think, cola think schnapps. Out. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Let's see. There we go. All right. Oh, my. Well, it's not good. We, we kind of knew that going in. <laughs> That's the best face. That may be the best face we had on one of these videos ever. Yeah. It's, it's like molasses. It is. And it's, it's not from clovey notes. Yeah. But it's not from evaporation. It's not like the um, schnapps that I tasted with Fred Yarm that were half empty and you know we knew the sugars have been concentrated. This, you know, all the liquid is still in there. This is probably about 
the consistency it had when it was produced. Mm. Yeah, it definitely, I'm not getting pretty much any cherry. But I'm surprised how much you know, Christmas cake uh, yeah. notes that it has. Sure. Like it's, it has more depth than I expected, like pure artificial mm -hmm. flavor. Right. And this actually tastes kind of natural, just well, in I, a bad way. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know what Seagram's was doing like in 86 when this bottle was from, right? Because early on they were like, you know, really high standards. Like they cared a lot about doing things right. Um, but by the time they're making cherry cola schnapps instead of whiskey, uh, those standards may have dropped uh, a little bit. What I thought is interesting about this is that it does have some of the bite of cola. Yes. Do you think that's coming from the alcohol or do you think they have something else in there? I don't know. I th I thought I could almost like smell the the idea of carbonation when, when I was exactly smelling. Yeah. Right. It does like prickle my tongue like carbonation would. Yes. And and I, I don't I, know <laughs> what would make it do that. <laughs> it's just, maybe know. it's just pain. <laughs> I am getting some lime zest in it, which, okay. which is one of the flavors that make up cola. There's like four or five flavors. If you put them together, they, they oh, that become cola. cola. And I think one of them is uh, lime zest. Okay. And so, um, yeah, a little citrusy. I kind of want to like soak a cake in this. You know that like fruitcake tradition? That, like, I could see that, brushing it on some sort of dark cake. Are you getting any cherry? No. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. And, you know, and again, if the cherry is, like, volatile aromatics, they could just have blown off. Nothing. Well, I, I will have to come back and taste something more delicious with you. <laughs> but I really appreciate you uh, taking not just one, but two yeah. for the team. <laughs> All right. Well, if you want to see uh, us taste uh, more delicious and not so delicious things, definitely check out MyTinyBottles.com where you will find more tasting videos as well as the reveal videos where I grab a few bottles from my grandmother's collection and uh, guess what I can tell about them. And then you can see all the videos and hear the stories and read the stories about each individual bottle as I try to tease out its history. So, uh, so that's where you can find me. And where can people find you? Oh, you can find me at alkademics.com and alkademics at pretty much any social media site. Yeah. Excellent. Well, uh, cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> <laughs>